Okay, so I just want to do a very quick walkthrough to try to clear up some ideas about um, about the project and specifically just how to look at the anal anal analysis of this um, project. So first, let's just go open up Soda Demand and run the data interpreter. And um, again, we should note we've got uh, Soda Sales. So we have different uh, brands, different containers. Okay, so Adult Cola comes in plastic, comes in other containers. Um, in fact, let's just go to the worksheet. So, so first thing, um, <clears throat> first thing, we need to specify. So think about all the variations we have. We have variations across brand. Uh, capacity and container are the same. There's a one-to-one -one mapping here. So we have variations across containers, geographic variations, variation across date. And what am I talking about? Um, oh, look at this. Thank you, Windows Update. Uh, so what am I talking about variations? I'm talking about variations in our key metrics, which are price and quantity. Okay, so we have variations in price and quantity across brands, across container, across ge geography, and across date. So um, think about what the market actually. So what defines the market? The marketplace is going to be defined by the brand, the container, and the geography, right? That's what defines. So let's, let's take a look at that. So first off, what we want to do is actually just specify a market. So let's grab a container. And we'll just pick on plastic. How's that? Okay, we'll pick on plastic. So we'll look at the plastic plastic containers, um, and we can do this either way. But let's throw let's throw uh, maybe brands in the rows, and what did I say else? Geography in the columns. So you see we have Athens, Adult Cola, uh, plastic container. Now you see. That's a, that's a very defined, that's the market that we actually have defined here. So now we're at the level that we need to be, okay? Now within this level, we can do a lot of different analytics. You can look at, say, what's the average price? So I could just double click on price and guess what? Oh, we don't want some price. Let's look at, so let's look at measure average. I can look at the average prices of these different types of uh, products. Of course, think about how are we averaging? What's the one level of variation we haven't had in here so far? It's the time dimension. So it's actually just averaging across the time dimensions within the category of Athens adult cola plastic containers. You see, that's how we're looking at this. Now I can, if I want to do my regression lines, so that's a simple cross tab. I'm just showing you that very simply you can pull up information about price or quantity or create other metrics and just pull it up and look at the markets directly this way. Another thing you can do is uh, with the same setup, look at your price response functions. So price response function, now we have quantity is going to be, um, oh geez, what's quantity? Quantity is going to be on the row space and price is in the column space. And of course, we always want to do average price, not the sum of price. If we did sum of price, look, these things are costing like 200 euros. <laughs> that's yeah, that's an expensive Coke. No, uh, it's not 200 euros. It's actually an average. So let's do an average price. And that looks a lot more sensible. Okay, so um, average price, total quantities. And we don't have the variation here because uh, we, we basically are looking within each of these categories and it's showing us the average price and the sum quantity point across all the time dimensions. So to bring the time variation in and to make that apparent, I'm going to use the color or the details. We use color and we want to look across time. So let's look at date. We could do detail like this, or I could have done color. Uh, either one's fine. And again, uh, we don't want to just have it go across for every year <clears throat> because our data has more variation. Remember, we want to use uh, year and month year and month is the best smallest level so there's our scatter plots right there um now we have now we should see all the different um so if i, I look at this is september 2017 uh kinder cola uh, plastic has uh average quantity of 24,654 in the salonic 
Greeky. I'm so bad about my Greek. So sorry if anyone's Greek here. I'm uh, butchering your your beautiful um, city names, but uh, you can see the point. Okay, so that that this point, and, and we have all these different. These are all different month year combinations. All these points. So we have these all across time. Okay. Um, now we're just going to throw in a uh, a trend line. Okay, there we go. We got a trend line. Now this is the this is actually our price response functions for our linear estimates of price response functions for um, these different uh, markets. So again, to recap, what I did is I defined the market by by pulling in these. Um, I pull by actually pulling in, so I filtered on the container, and I put I put city and brand in the column or row space, and it's kind of arbitrary which one you pick. And then I threw in exactly what I wanted to plot here, uh, and then pulled my variation, which is our time variation into the details, and then that created the, the variation, and then I did the trend line. And you see what we get out of here is a, an equation of quantity equals, um, we have a slope, so it's negative 12,502 times the average price. That's y is equal to mx plus b formula. Okay, that's the slope of a, that's a, slope of a line. Uh, so we have, um, we have y being quantity, x is the average price. So the slope m is negative 12,502. And B is an intercept of 63,111. So there's our equation of our line. And remember that what we have, what we want to have is the, um, so we have the elasticity. Remember, elasticity at a point. So now what I have is a point, it's any point. This is for Gazoza, okay? And you see that, um, well, first off, what we need to remember is that elasticity, I wish I had another. My, my regular document camera here, I don't, pardon me. Elasticity is going to be equal to the slope of the price response function, which is this uh, delta Q over delta P. That's just the, the rise quantity, the delta Q over the run. That's the slope times a point P over Q. So P over Q is going to be, say, a, a specific point. So I'll just give you an example. So for Gazoza, Athens in uh, at, at this point, average price, price is 105. So our P is equal to 1.005. And our Q, I'm just taking it right off that box right there, is equal to 41.364. See, that's a point. And so on our slope, now we can hover over the line. Our slope is equal to... 49,899. So let's calculate elasticity. Go ahead and calculate it. That should be equal to 49889.8 times 1.005 divided by uh, 41.364. That's my calculation for elasticity. Let me make this bigger. Okay. There we go. So we have this Latin elasticity. We have uh, slope times a pro, the, the, the point P over Q. So for a given point, I just picked a point. Remember, P is 1.005. At that point, Q was 41.364. And so elasticity was the slope times P over Q. And then you can just calculate that really simply. Go ahead and calculate it. So just pull out your calculator. For this, and that's fine. Just go uh, four nine eight eight nine point eight times one point zero zero five divided by four one three six four. We get an elasticity of one point two one two, which is going to be considered elastic, right? Because it's greater than one. So remember, as a, as a good is more elastic. So if we're in a more elastic point on the demand curve, if we're more elastic, what does that mean? More elastic means that 
the uh, that basically the the markets are more competitive. You've got more com competition going. You haven't really quite differentiated your good. You have less price control, right? Because remember elasticity. When we just remember to think back to it, remember the definitions which you got to bake in your head. So this is percentage change in quantity for this percentage change in price. Okay, so percentage change in quantity for percentage. If that is greater than one, which we calculated, that means quantity effects dominate, right? That means that the, the, de the numerator has to be bigger than the, than the denominator. So that means um, that means that remember revenue, total revenue is equal to price times quantity, right? And remember these go price times quantity. These go in opposite directions because demand's downward sloping. So if this is greater than one, quantity effects dominate. That means I should do what with my price? Guess and think. Okay, quantity effects dominate. Price and quantity move in opposite directions. That means actually I want my Q to go up if quantity effects dominate, because I want this to be the positive one. Remember, these are going to be moving in opposite directions. So I want my Q to go up, right? And that means I want to lower my price. Okay, that means you should lower your price. So elasticity greater than one, you're going to optimize by lowering your price. You're, you're more... Um, you're more elastic. This is greater than one. Quantity effects are going to dominate. So when I lower my price, I'm going to get, I'm going to actually get more, I'm going to get more um, quantity, right? So I'll hurt my revenue because prices will go down, but I'll gain quantity. So that's the point. I'm going to gain, you're going to hurt your revenues uh, by lowering your price because price will go down, but you'll gain quantity. Elasticity greater than one, Q greater than one. the numerator is greater than the, than, the, than the denominator. If this is a fraction greater than one, think about it like five thirds greater than one because five is greater than three. If it's three fifths, it would be smaller than one, right? Okay, so remember that means uh, that tells you which effect dominates your revenue equation. And just remember these are always working in opposite directions. Okay, so that's kind of the key there. Uh, just to sort of figure it out. And so what you really need to do is just be able to calculate the elasticities at different points and then make some uh, sort of managerial decision makings about which way to move prices. Okay, that's sort of the overall uh, arching goal of this assignment. Um, I will say that we're sweeping some things under the rug with just a simple linear regression, okay? We can get more complicated than this. And the reason that you might think that is, is look, we have prices from January, we have prices from December, we have prices all across the year. And guess what? I'll bet you, if you're thinking, demand probably fluctuates over the year. Wouldn't you think for soda? Probably more hot of a drink, you get more thirsty. And in fact, we can look at that if I just look at quantities now. I'll just show you. In fact, this is right. I'm going to show you what I'm sweeping under the rug here, um, in case you want to think about this a little bit further. But um, Let's look at going across and not month. Let's take this off, remove. Look at that. Year and uh, let's not go year. Let's go. Let's go to our month like this. Look at that. You see the cyclical variation again. Look in June, then goes down in December, back up in June, May, June. Down in December, January, back up in June. Oh, it st stuck around a little longer that year. Changed up, it changed up a little bit of, of its cyclical seasonal shape. But what I'm just going to show you is that we're actually looking across all these dates when we're doing our simple linear regression in this um, in this in this problem. And what I'm also suggesting is we're sweeping some things under the rug a little bit. And what we're sweeping under the rug, just so you know is we're sweeping under seasonality. And you can deal with all these kind of things with some more advanced statistics. It does take more advanced statistics to deal with seasonality. So, okay, um, so there you go. <laughs> uh, we can't do it all. I wish we, we would need more time to do it all. But um, but there's, there's, there's actually uh, a lot of interesting thoughts. I'm just trying to at least open the door, show you what we're doing, show them what we're sweeping under the rug. You don't need to know the seasonality thing. We're not gonna cover it. Um, and in fact, you can totally ignore all of this time, all of this type of uh, discussion I just had about seasonality if it confuses you, because the main part about the assignment is really just looking at elasticity, being able to take a point, make a calculation about elasticity, and make 
a managerial decision. Now, if you have a statistician who can control for seasonality, that's all you're going to need to really know, because all you really need to know is, is demand elastic or inelastic. And so a statistician can control for seasonality. Maybe you can't right now. Maybe you could if you, you could if you took some more stats, you definitely could. And I'll say um, either way, you just need to know how to make a managerial decision based upon the estimate that you have. Okay. Um, and what I'm suggesting to you is that our estimates could actually be much improved, but that's okay. Okay. We're, we're still, um, we're still learning. And this is like an introduction to this whole topic. So you can dive far into it. Um, but if you don't want to dive into it, at least know how to make the decisions that come out of the analytics, because that's what is going to be expected of you as a manager. If you're interfacing with a technician or a statistician who's doing this kind of work, you're going to be expected to be able to, to, to know what's behind the decision making problem. and the decision comes down to, okay, so you have an estimate of elasticity. Now, what do you do about the price? Okay. Well, okay. So that's it. That's, that's, that's it right there. Okay.